If you tuned into the recent Pixel 4 launch or have any interest in the Pixel 6 series, then Google fully detailed its new Tensor chip and called it the biggest mobile hardware innovation in the history of the company. But what does that mean? And where does this chip stack up? Well, let's explain. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. Google's stated goal for building Tensor is to push what's possible on its own internally developed smartphones, and the company wants to bring AI breakthroughs directly to Pixel and drive forward its vision of always available technology, things like ambient computing. The former is born out of Google's hardware division, believing that AI-backed smart features are how it differentiates the Pixel against its competitors, while Google considers phones the central control device of an ambient system. The Pixel launch event notably saw Google talk about ambient computing yet again, and the last time that occurred was a in a significant manner, that is, was the 2019 Pixel 4 launch, which some of you may remember. In an interview with The Verge, Rick Ostolo said that work started back in 2017 after the company came to the realization that it couldn't take a piecemeal approach. Things like building a single coprocessor, for example, the Pixel Visual and the Neural Core, to boost its AI models. Rather, they needed an optimized chip that is for the desired tasks or the task needed on Pixel smartphones. At the Pixel launch event, Google went into tensor details and explicitly touted the inclusion of two high performance ARM Cortex X1 cores at 2.8 GHz. They are joined by two mid 2.25 GHz A76 CPU cores, with Ars Technica's Google Silicon interview also pointing out how they're based upon a 5 nanometer process rather than the 7 nanometer process originally found in the flagship chips last year. Four high efficiency or small A55 cores round out the CPU here. The dual X1 approach does allow Google to throw more power at the workloads that are of medium intensity. In a normal CPU, the mid cores could handle such tasks like Google Lens visual analysis, but be maxed out. Google says using two X1 cores in that scenario would be more efficient, and that's what Tensor is optimized for. In real terms, it's 80% faster than the Pixel 5's Snapdragon 765G from last year, which is quite a big jump when you think about it. There's also a 20 core GPU that Google says delivers a premium gaming experience for the most popular Android games out there. It's 370% faster than the Pixel 5, which uses the Adreno 620 GPU. So gaming shouldn't be an issue for the Pixel 6 series. Meanwhile, the Tensor Security Core is a CPU-based system that's isolated from the application processor and dedicated to running sensitive tasks and controls. It works with the dedicated Titan M2 security chip, which isn't actually part of Tensor itself, but Google touts it as being resilient to things like advanced attacks like electromagnetic analysis for voltage glitching and laser fault injection. The original Titan M chip just works in conjunction with software to stop your phone from being rolled back to an older version of Android that might have security vulnerabilities. It also does things like prevent bootloader unlocking and verifies your lock screen passcode for that extra layer of security, and it is very welcome on all Pixel smartphones. There's also, of course, the Tensor Processing Unit, and this machine learning engine is said to be custom made by Google Research for Google Research and built where machine learning models are heading, not where they are currently today. The Image Signal Processor, or ISP, features an accelerator that runs the HDRNet algorithm, a key reason the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro can do things like live HDR plus video at 4K 60fps more conveniently than maybe other phones on the market. The Context Hub also brings machine learning to the ultra low power domain and it allows for always on display uh, features like now playing and other ambient experiences to kind of run all the time without necessarily draining your battery, although we have to put this through its paces with our review units in the coming weeks. All of these components make up Tensor with Google prioritizing what they consider total performance and efficiency here. This specifically involves excelling at heterogeneous computing tasks that require various parts of the SOC to work together. For example, Lens makes use of the CPU, the GPU, the ISP, and the TPU to run efficiently. And this is where Google hopes that Tensor will excel compared to other chipsets out there. In terms of camera features, Tensor also allows other things to be done th besides the Live HDR+, which does make colors more accurate and vivid at 4K 60fps. Tensor also allows computational photography and video features like motion mode in Google Camera 
action pan which blurs the background, while long exposure works on the subject to ensure it stays in focus. Meanwhile, things like face detection is more accurate on the Pixel 6 and works faster due to the integrated subsystems, while apparently consuming half the power compared to the Pixel 5 when in these modes. Assistant on Tensor is also using what Google considers the most advanced speech recognition model ever released by the firm at again what they suggest is half the power. The high quality ASR or automatic speech recognition model is also used to transcribe voice commands as well as in long running applications, things like recorder and live caption without quickly or significantly draining the battery. Meanwhile, there's assistant voice typing for editing what you've just transcribed in an entirely hands-free manner and live translate with the Pixel's translation quality improving it's up to 18%, a level of improvement that typically takes multiple years of research according to Google's own marketing material. For those wondering though about benchmarks, which I'm sure a lot of you out there are, while this isn't necessarily a good way of evaluating power, it's still a nice ballpark figure for you to kind of get your head around and understand, Geekbench 5 listings suggest that Tensor sits atop of the single core benchmark leaderboard with a score of over 1,030 and a multi-core score of around 2,750 and that places it just around the same levels as devices with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 at least in multi-core score. Overall that seems pretty good for the first internal chip from Google but it's in other areas that raw power and the Google kind of touts the Tensor chip itself. We'll delve it more into the power available and the under the hood grunt during our full review in the coming days, but for now it seems pretty good all things considered. Google is not giving a number or generation number to Tensor at launch, but the company will presumably append a number to the next version. For example, the Titan M is succeeded by the Titan M2, so maybe we'll see Tensor 1, which is this new initial version, and then Tensor 2 in a future pixel. There's also no doubt that Google is making more chips for phones and potentially other form factors have been rumored as well. SVP Rick Ostolo also said that it's a hardware foundation that Google will be building upon for years to come. So we'd expect to see more tensor powered smartphones and then maybe hopefully some other hardware in the not too distant future too. So hopefully that kind of clears up a few things surrounding Google's tensor chip. And naturally, if you're excited for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro because of the new CPU, then let us know down in the comment sections below and what you think of this shift to a wholly Google developed device from start to finish. Let us know what you think down in the comment sections below. But until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.